What's going on? My name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'm going to show you how we built out an entire clothing store on the cheap in a week on Modern Builds. Hey, yo. So my buddy Caleb, you know Caleb. Opened a clothing store in downtown Oklahoma City, and I helped him build everything out. You want me to say come on in? Let's do one more take. And we really had two main challenges. One, we only had about a week to build this whole store out. And second, we wanted to do everything as affordably as possible and make it repeatable for the people that are watching this video. The pieces we designed used simple, affordable materials, and we made multiples of each item in different sizes so that the entire store can be reconfigured for a fresh new look without adding any new elements. The theme that we went for in this space was OSB and raw steel. It's a cool, modern, industrial vibe, and it really lets the clothing stand out instead of all of the fixtures. The store that is now 1032 Space used to be a men's fashion store called Slim, and it was, well, ugly. Before I did anything, we got rid of all the built-ins. That meant this big cabinet on the back side of the store, as well as those LED panels on the walls. The original store, though, definitely had its upside. The polished concrete floors, the track lighting up top, as well as all the clothing racks along the walls. The only problem with the existing racks is that they're too big for a standard hanger to fit over. I went to my local metal supplier, Metal Supermarkets, and I picked up some quarter inch by inch and a half hot rolled steel. Then I drilled a hole on each end of the bar and in the center so that I could use cable to attach it to the existing racks. Unfortunately, I lost a little bit of this footage, but you can see just how much more functional this is now. The racks are a little bit lower, which is really convenient, and the raw steel complements the concrete floors really nicely. I'm at Home Depot, and while I was there, I got some half-inch thick OSB cut to size on the panel saw. The pedestals that I'm making are all the same size, and if you're interested in the dimensions, check out the written article linked in the description of this video. I was able to set up a stop block on my miter saw so that I could cut all of my pieces at one time. Then I got my favorite wood glue out, Gorilla Glue wood glue, along with my Ryobi 18 volt finish nailer to assemble these boxes. I really like Gorilla Glue wood glue because it dries closest to the natural color of wood instead of the yellow color most wood glues dry to. We made a lot of these boxes and once they were roughly assembled, we moved them over to Caleb where he could use wood filler along all of the seams. I grabbed some of the extra OSB so that I could mark and cut each of the tops individually to fit the specific pedestal they're going onto. Since all of the pedestals weren't assembled perfectly square or the exact same size, doing these individually just helped me get cleaner results. We used a 120 grit belt on the belt sander to flush up all of our edges and to make the OSB perfectly smooth to the touch. Then we went through the grits all the way up to 220 on the orbital sander. Now I know what you're thinking, your company makes wood finish, why are you using Minwax Polycrylic? And that is because it's water-based and OSB naturally is really yellow, so I didn't want to accentuate that any further. As a display, we got an old CRT TV that reminded me of Stranger Things. Then we hooked up a DVD player that we had burned on a video file with a bunch of different graphics and phrases that look really cool. But what's amazing about these pedestals is that they can be used just about everywhere in the store. You can use them to highlight individual products or you can make individual store displays by pairing them up together in different orientations. And before we move on to the next project, I wanna give a huge thanks to this video sponsor, FilterBuy. FilterBuy has the best selection of high quality American made air filters in stock, ready to be delivered from their factory to your door. No middleman. And the best part, free shipping. We all know changing air filters can be a hassle. Going to a store, remembering what size you need, and choosing between all of the different filters that stores normally carry. Well, FilterBuy has completely streamlined that process. With over 600 pleated air filter sizes for over 40 different brands and counting, FilterBuy is sure to have the filter to fit your need. 
at the best price. And what's really awesome is that you get to choose how often air filters are delivered to your home or business. Choose from a one-time delivery or set up a recurring delivery for every month, two months, three months, six months, or 12 months. That way you're never stuck using an out-of-date filter. We replaced all the filters at 1032 Space with filter by filters. And because we don't have a ton of space in the stock room, we set up an auto delivery for every three months so that filters get replaced when they need to be, but they're not taking up any extra space in storage. So to find out more and to order some filters for yourself, make sure and follow the link down in the description, filterby.com. Thanks, FilterBy. A cash wrap, for those who aren't familiar, is basically an industry term for a cash register stand. We decided to build ours out of quarter inch thick plate steel and OSB for the top and cabinets. So right now we're gonna be designing on the fly a little bit. We got this piece cut oversized because we want it to be slanted along both of the legs on the front end. We just don't know what we want that angle to be. We're just gonna put this in place. We're not gonna measure. We're not gonna check angles or anything. We're just gonna do what looks good. We just want to slope this back until we think it looks good. Yeah. Whoa, that's looking good. Like, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Bring it up just a tiny bit. Now go down. Stop. You all look at it. Once we had it where I liked it, I made a mark on the piece of plate still so that I could transfer that all the way across the piece. Then I got a crappy Harbor Freight angle grinder out with a cutoff wheel and started to cut this piece. I have a whole lot of videos where I use plate steel to create projects. In fact, I have a whole playlist linked in the description. It's called Metal Working. Whoa! I feel confident saying that's not good. I don't think it's supposed to do that. Once I was able to cut through that piece of plate steel, I could put it back in place until the tops of the sides as well as the front were aligned, then weld it in place. I ran inch and a half long beads at the top, bottom, and the middle of the plate still. I didn't want to run a full bead because I thought that would generate too much heat and make the still either warp or at least change color way too much. And if you're interested in learning more about welding, I have an intro to welding video on my second channel that goes over the common equipment and techniques used for welding. It's definitely not the end all be all guide, but if you're interested in learning more, it's a great resource. I'm welding this inch and a half by inch and a half angle onto the insides of the base because this will create a ledge that the cabinet is eventually going to rest on. I used my metal Maker Brand F-Style clamps to hold the piece in place while I welded it. If you're interested in learning more about my company Maker Brand and the products that we supply, make sure and follow the link down in the description, makerbrandco.com. After using a grinding wheel to round over and smooth all of the edges of the plate steel, I got a wire brush attachment for my angle grinder to buff out and remove all of the surface rust and pitting from the steel. Oh, and remember those crappy Harbor Freight angle grinders? It strikes again. After this, I learned my lesson, went to Home Depot, and picked up a new Ryobi angle grinder with tons more power, and it didn't catch on fire. I applied three coats of paste wax everywhere I kept the raw steel exposed. This will prevent it from rusting or from getting any kind of dirt, grease, or grime onto clothing or any of the people that are interacting with the store. The next day, we got some help, loaded it into the truck, and took it to the store. For anyone curious, I'm not sure exactly how heavy this base ended up being, but if I had to take a guess, I would say somewhere between 350 and 450 pounds. The cash wrap top is made out of two layers of half inch thick OSB, the same stuff as the pedestals. After we spread out all the glue, we put down the second piece of plywood and grabbed every single clamp that was at my parents' house so that we could hold these pieces together. Maker Brand Clamps, linked in the description. The next day, after the glue had dried, I came back with a circular saw to clean up all the edges and to make sure everything was square. I sanded the top the same as the pedestals, but I was careful not to sand through the print on the top of the counter. I thought it looked really cool and stood out quite a bit once the finish got applied. Off camera, I welded some small angle brackets to the inside of the base. That way I could screw in from the underside of the top and attach everything. 
The cabinet for the cash wrap is built out of three quarter inch plywood so that it would be a little bit stronger than the half inch OSB would have been. I cut all my pieces to size and attached them together the same way I did with the pedestal, wood glue and an 18 volt finish nailer. Like I said, the box is made out of plywood, but the faces are going to be made out of more half-inch OSB to tie everything together. The box itself slides right onto the ledges that we welded out of the inch and a half angle. Then I drilled and countersunk screws on the sides of the base and through that ledge so that everything was held really secure. I really love the way this piece came out. It's simple, understated, but when you see it in person, monumental. The racks that we altered earlier were great, but we still needed more storage, so I picked up some one inch by one inch square tubing. This is what I'll be building some portable clothing racks out of. I cut pieces of eighth inch plate steel to use as caps for the square tube anywhere that it would be visible at eye level. This was my first time doing this process and it really was simple. I was able to hold the cap in place while I tack welded it. Then I could run full beads across each of the faces that would be showing outwards. After that, I switched over to a grinding disc on my angle grinder so that I could make everything smooth and flush. I was genuinely surprised to see how cleanly these came out. In a lot of these pieces, it's almost impossible to see where the plate steel starts and the tube steel ends. The racks themselves are simple square frames. I was able to line everything up nice and square and tack weld my pieces in place. The only interesting part about these clothing racks is how the leg interacts with the rest of the body. I offset the bottom bar of the rack the exact width of the tube steel. This allowed me to slide the leg in underneath that crossbar to create some sort of three-way butt joint that worked really, really well. If you'll remember, we only had about a week to build out this store, so I was looking for any opportunity to increase my efficiency, and this was one way to do it. I ended up building five clothing racks, if I remember correctly. One that was five feet wide, one four feet wide, two three feet wide, and two that were two feet wide. I kept all my messy welds visible and finished everything with three coats of paste wax, just like the base. In the store, we used the different size racks to highlight different collections from different brands and designers. We also used a few in the dressing rooms, which you'll see later on. Speaking of later on, this is one of the two dressing rooms that we designed exactly the same. We picked up this comfy shag rug off of Amazon. It looks great. Link to that will be in the description. We had good lighting overhead, but we wanted to fill the space with light so that people could take fire selfies. And we did this by using Gorilla mounting tape squares to attach LED lights to the sides of the mirrors that we put in each of the dressing rooms. This two-sided mounting tape from Gorilla is really strong and perfect for this application. Plus it's clear, so no one is ever gonna see it. The lights themselves plug into an outlet that is hidden by the mirror, so everything worked out perfect. And to round out the dressing rooms, I altered the dimensions of the pedestals to create a couple of benches and threw in some clothing racks as well. I really love this mirror. It makes me want to do something similar for myself. So before we see the final store, I want to remind you guys what we started with. An ugly, contemporary men's clothing store. It had great walls, great floors, and great lighting, but that was about it. Now, check out what we made. When Caleb and I were discussing what we wanted 1032 space to look and feel like, we always landed on the term minimal. We wanted the clothes to stand out and the fixtures to fade away into the background almost. The brands and designers that they carry in store definitely are not cheap, so it was an interesting challenge for me to take OSB, which happens to be the cheapest sheet good at Home Depot, and to elevate it enough to match the brands and designers that they carry. I know a lot of people are going to ask, so I want to say we spent less than $2,500 on the materials for this build-out. I'm an investor in the store, so I didn't charge for my labor. Plus, he's my friend, so I consider it a favor. Either way, if you're in Oklahoma City or shopping online, check out 1032 Space, linked in the description. 
Oh, and one more thing. I know people are going to ask about the cash wrap. They use a card reader attached to an iPad, so everything is tabletop mounted. The cash drawer is in the cabinet, and that's able to lock. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I want to say thanks to Sam for watching. If you're not, subscribe to this channel so you can stay updated every time I post more project videos. If you want to check out the playlist of build projects like this, I've got renovations, store builds, all kinds of stuff. That'll be linked in the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds.